Hello, welcome to the Thursday, December 9th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. We do have a new forensic challenge, thanks to a Brad who posted this again for this month. So as usual, there is a packet capture that you're expected to analyze with Wireshark in order to answer the questions that Brad posted here. Speed doesn't matter in this case, you just have uh, to submit uh, the answer before the deadline. That's Wednesday, December 22nd. As usual, we'll give away a Raspberry Pi and, well, probably won't make it before the holidays, uh, given that we determine the winner on December 22nd, but, well, shortly thereafter, you'll hopefully get it. Raspberry Pis have been a little bit in short supply, so sorry if there's a little bit delay then in shipping them out. One of the services offered by cloud providers is the ability to run entire desktop operating systems in the cloud and access them remotely. This, of course, provides a nicely remote managed solution for workers to have a protected system in the cloud that they are then using sort of for their daily work and that's isolated from anything that they may be doing in their home networks. But of course, of course, you do want to connect some physical devices that are located in the user's uh, office uh, to these remote desktops, in particular USB devices like uh, webcams. So you essentially can run Zoom on the remote desktop in the cloud and at the same time use the USB webcam that you have connected to your home computer. In order to provide uh, this uh, capability, uh, the providers are using a library by Eltima that is implementing a USB over Ethernet protocol. Sadly, according to a blog post by Sentinel Labs, this particular SDK has numerous vulnerabilities that allow for privilege escalation on the remote desktop up to the kernel level, which then in turn could be used to, for example, disable some security services. There are various providers that are offering these remote desktop services, and many of them are using uh, these uh, libraries. Now, Sentinel Labs uh, wasn't able to test all of them. Three they're pointing out here are ACOPS, No Machine, and AWS Amazon Workspaces. For these three, the blog post does offer links to advisories and assistance in mitigating this vulnerability. Microsoft Office 365 credentials are remaining one of the favorite targets for phishing attacks. And attackers are always looking for new ways to actually pull off these phishing attacks using legitimate Microsoft URLs. The latest example shown by Proofpoint that's actually being exploited in the wild is taking advantage of a little quirk, you may call it a bug, in Microsoft's OAuth implementation. The problem here is that if uh, during the OAuth uh, flow uh, there is an error happening either prior or after the user actually authenticated, the user is being redirected to the redirect URL provided by the application as part of uh, the link. So what an attacker would do now is they would send you a legitimate looking and uh, overall legitimate link to login.microsoftonline.com and as part Part of the parameters being passed, they would provide their phishing URL and also make sure that uh, during uh, the initial setup or even after authentication, an error occurs by, for example, omitting one of the required parameters, which will then immediately redirect the user to the phishers selected URL. This, of course, allows then for a much more plausible phishing attack. It also makes filtering these links so much more difficult because, again, it's going to a legitimate login.microsoftonline.com OAuth endpoint. Proofpoint does list in its blog some of uh, the domains being used uh, by these phishing attacks, so you may want to use that to double-check your DNS logs. 
Google released its monthly Android patches. Yes, again, a number of uh, critical vulnerabilities, for example, in the media framework uh, yet again, and also a couple system remote control execution vulnerabilities that uh, Google did rate as uh, critical. Didn't see anything that's already exploited. So uh, that's, I guess, some uh, good news here. No zero days this month. Apply these updates as they become available for your particular phone. And well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.